Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here, if this is one of your first visits here, welcome. Say hi to the camera, Ruby. Ruby is, I'm in my kitchen, and Ruby, my African Grey, she is hanging out with me, but she actually wants to be down there, down on the kitchen counter. She does not want to be on my hand. She wants to be on the kitchen counter, which is one of her favorite places to be, but unfortunately she gets into too much mischief when she's on the counter. I'll see if I can get her to go on the shoulder for a bit. There you go. That's probably not going to satisfy her. She'd much rather be on the kitchen counter getting into trouble, and getting into trouble is exactly what she would do there. So, um, it is Thursday, September 2nd. Guys, it's September already. Um, it's my day off, and I know it's my day off because a headache is brewing, and also because I've got a to-do list a mile long. So, it's already, it's already after 10.30 in the morning, so we might as well get started. Um, I don't put, maybe I might actually put a coffee on to help with the headache of my curing. So I'm going to maybe do that. And then I've got the kitchen to tidy up as well as some laundry to do. I have a load of delegates in the wash that I put in the other day that I did not take out. And I have a feeling they're probably going to need to be rewashed as well. I have um, some Concord grapes I have to pick up from a lady off of Marketplace at some point today. And I also need to do groceries at Superstore. I, I could do that at any point, but it is Thursday. So it's the beginning of the new week of um, PC Optimum offers from Superstore. So I kind of would like to go to Superstore sometime today, get all that done, as well as pick up the grapes. And then the grapes are to make jelly with. So what I would probably do is I would probably try and boil up at least one batch of them tonight and crush them and let them strain in cheesecloth overnight tonight. I'm thinking with the amount of grapes I'm getting, I might get two, maybe three batches of jelly. I don't think I'll get more than that. But I might try and get, if I get them picked up early enough today, I may try and get a batch or two boiled up and straining overnight so that tomorrow the juice will already be extracted and I just have to make the jelly. I do have to work tomorrow, but if the majority of the work, the prep work is already done, it won't be a big deal. So I've got a bunch of other jars of jam over there and some other, some other right down here. Here on the counter, I'm trying to I'm trying to use blur my or to use my new selfie like tripod thing here and get it angled and stuff. But yes, yeah, so I've got a bunch of jars of jam that need to go downstairs, need to get put away. I've, I've already labeled them, but they need to be put away downstairs somewhere. I need to organize that, and that would also free up room on the countertop to do other work today too. Plus, I should think about what to make for supper later. I know it's already. It's only 11, actually it's 11 o'clock, not 10.30. So the morning has gotten away on me. So time to grab a coffee, which I don't normally drink, but when my head is hurting, that's the stronger version of caffeine than just pop. So I guess I will make that and try and get started. There's not too, too much to do in this kitchen. It's it just, I have to take the drawers downstairs. That's the biggest thing that's to do in the kitchen right now. And finish getting the dishwasher loaded so it can be run. But I will bring you with me of my day of adventures today so follow along if you would like and we'll see what kind of stuff we can get into oh what's that nice for you to kiss me good job ruby such a good girl you're a good girl you're being very good yes you are are you cute we got we adopted her on july 1st so we just had her two months she is 22 years old but we've only had her two months so far she's cute she's a handful sometimes she's a little noisy sometimes but she's a cutie we enjoy her all right be back in a bit It's time to get this coffee going. Um, got my flamingo mug. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I love birds. We have a house full of parrots. And I also love flamingos, so why not? And then we've got ourselves the coffee enhancer. It's actually it's on sale at my store. I forget how much we paid for it. I paid for it last night. Starbucks brand white chocolate. White chocolate mocha, mocha flavored. So that is what I'm going to add to my coffee. I don't have any teaspoons in the drawer currently to use. I'll just use a tablespoon to stir it. Push this back up to the wall. 
There we go. Hopefully the caffeine will assist with the headache and help me maybe get started on getting a few things done, give me some energy to get things get things going. Okay, well, I want to try and tidy up my kitchen, but as you can see, we've got a troublemaker trying to get into my flower bag down here. Come on. That's not... Yeah, 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 you know you've been caught. You know you're in trouble, don't you? Come on. Okay. That's enough out of that. We're not doing that. We're not going to get into trouble in the kitchen. No, we're not. You're not going to sit on my shoulder either, apparently. Okay. So basically, you're going to be more of a hindrance than a help. How about we put you on the couch? Then I can see you there. You probably will fly back in here, but let's try this. Okay. Deposited the bird in the other room. See how long that lasts. She probably will fly back in here, but we'll see. I don't even know where to begin in this place. I've got... Avon catalog that came. Actually, it's surprising how big these Avon catalogs are. Now look how thick these things are. This all came in like one bundle. All of this. So I'll probably just put it maybe in a magazine rack in the living room for now. We'll see. Or I'll have a quick scan through it and see if there's anything I really want. And if not, just put in the recycling bin. I'm just going to angle you guys up. I'm still learning to work with this tripod ring light thing and see if I can get the best angle and lighting and stuff. Just a little bit more light on this subject here. It's a daylight here, but it's not a sunny day, so I'm gonna go. most of the clutter will be gone out of this room once I take the uh, jars downstairs, so that'll be the next thing. That's in Burger King and McDonald's coupons, so I might as just throw those up there. Yeah, it's a bit of a gray, rainy day out here. Well, not really rainy, but it is a gray day out here. It looks like it wants to rain. So we'll see. And when it rains, we usually wind up with water in our basement in the one corner closet. So that means throwing towels down to absorb any water, which means more laundry for me. Because I don't have enough on the go already. Um, first food, oops, let that go. Probably going to buy another bag of these pellets because we have a house full of pet birds and our bigger birds are African Grey, our Senegal, our Indian Ringneck. Our Quaker, our Conyers all eat this. They're kind of they, they smell like bubblegum and supposedly they taste like bubblegum. I've not tasted them, it's just what the guy at the pet store told us. So that is a staple of the bigger birds diet. Although I'm finding that our Senegal and our Indian ring neck in particular aren't a big fan of these. And they tend to be a little bit on the picky side. So I try to also give them some of the uh, Zucreme fruit pellets. And for those two, I'll try to give them more of that than the bubblegum. Although the Zucreme is supposed to be more of a treat than that, that's supposed to be the staple. But I'm going to try and switch them to like rowdy bush or something for the staple of their diet then. Because they can't just have a steady diet of different pellets. But the um, Senegal in particular will literally throw the food out of his dish onto the floor if he's not 
Jeez, is there stuff in there that he doesn't want? So he's throwing it on the floor of his cage, which then gets mixed in with his bird droppings, and it's just gross. So sometimes if he's desperate, he'll go down there and eat it after, but quite often not. He's usually going to be a staple. Tarts. Seemed like a good idea at the time when I bought it, but it is well past its expiry, so we're just gonna scoop that out, get rid of it, and then fill up the jar for recycling. I would not feel comfortable serving it or eating it. It doesn't look moldy inside. The seal on the jar was fine, but it's beyond its beyond its time. So time to feel like a good idea at the time buying it, thinking I'd make tarts, high pie, and it just never happened and I forgot about it. So okay. And then I've got my Grocery list all made up. Planning to do a superstore run for groceries later. And I, on my grocery list is a list of what's on my PC Optimum offers, so I know what I would get points on. Mostly we'll be taking all these jars downstairs <clears throat> and restarting the laundry. So I guess I will take you along down there with me. I'm going to go have a quick look in my daughter's room for any glasses to put in my dishwasher. And actually what's left here. Um, for a few things. Uh, you know what? I'm life because I cooked up the meat on Saturday and it's now Thursday. Uh, two pieces left. I might just you know, see if I can put them in a container to freeze. I guess that might still be okay. They don't smell okay. So I wonder if I can freeze it in this. No, I don't think that's not quite big enough. I am 
not super chatting in this video so far because the caffeine hasn't kicked in yet. Okay, side by side. Get this other piece out. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Get this last little bit into the garbage so that all the noodles and stuff won't go in the dishwasher and clog things up. Surprisingly, there are no dirty dishes that I can see, but not without turning the light on in there anyway. And I don't want to do that because she's still sleeping, she's been working on some 7 a.m. shifts and she wanted to sleep in on her day off, so I don't want to turn the light on and annoy her. So instead, I'm going to drain these two wonderful things from the sink. It is a big bone of contention with me, they don't get drained. There's always garbage and junk in them. And they need draining, so I'm going to put those in the dishwasher after I drain them out. This guy which into here. downstairs with that load of delicates, there's no reason for it to have sat in the washer for two days. Usually if something's sitting in the washer, it's because something's sitting in the dryer, which means I haven't folded. This time, I'm pretty darn sure there's nothing in the dryer. But the problem with the delicates, why I put that off, is because I only dry them for about 10 minutes in the dryer, and then I hang them to dry. And I was probably doing it at a time where it was later in the evening, and I didn't want to have to stay up and hold them out of the dryer after 10 minutes, so I didn't bother putting them in, but that means now that things got away on me and they never made it into the dryer. All right. So probably best to rewash them because they're probably smelling a little iffy right now. All right. Oh, forgot I need a lid for that container to freeze it. That would probably be wise, huh? two slices, put them in the freezer so they don't go bad, put them in the fridge freezer for now I think. Frozen fruit, frozen baking, 
um, things like that. But I can see that I have left a couple of loaves baking in, this up in the fridge freezer. So that means I've been slacking and getting that stuff put away. So that's if those things from the heat freeze downstairs and you belong, I'd have some room in the fridge freezer here. Okay. Well, this isn't perfect, but again, it's still all jars. So I'm going to work on taking those downstairs. And, well, I'll take you downstairs with me. I'm going to start on, get that little laundry started. And I don't know if I'll take you into the furnish room with me to show you how I rearranged my jams and stuff in on the shelves because that room is so crowded and there really is no good spot to um, mount this tripod in there so I may just do that off camera just because there's no real place to, to mount that in that room. That room is very crowded. It's like storage room basically so we'll see. And here we have Ruby keeping guard over the neighborhood as she hollers at every cyclist or person walking a dog going down the street. Mailman's on our street currently and she's probably going to let out a holler or two when she sees him coming because he's coming from this direction. And she, oh, she has a nice loud spiel that she does whenever anybody walks by. Although watch now that I'm filming her, she probably won't be bothered to do it. What are you going to do, Ruby? Are you going to tell us that somebody's coming? Oh, here comes the mailman. Here he comes. He's in our driveway. Come on. There he goes. Or she. I'm not sure. From behind, I can't tell. There goes the mailman. Oh. That was actually relatively subdued for you. Usually you're going off fuller volume than that. But yes, we have guard parrots. They let us know when somebody's in the yard, in the driveway. Intruders, in their opinion. Okay, hi again. It is now almost midnight Thursday night. This day has gotten out completely out of hand. Precious little on my to-do list today got done. It is 11.58 at night. I'm currently rewashing that load of delicates just now. Because it has been in the washer for a good two days. And they, they didn't smell like terrible when I opened the washer, but it's been in there. Like it needs to be rewashed just to be, you know, it just needs to be redone. So, okay, fine. <sighs> Did not get to Superstore. I have to speak... Um, at a business meeting at my church on September 26th in the evening. And I had typed up a draft of what I wanted to say and I forwarded it to our pastor and I wound up spending a good chunk of the day. Of course, I was battling a pretty wicked headache earlier too. I wound up spending a good chunk of the day on the computer tweaking it and rewording it because he wanted it to be down to a 1200 word limit and I was about 400 words over. And I was having a dickens of a time knowing where to cut without taking away from the message of what I was trying to convey. And in the end, I got it down to 1,218 words, which he said was fine. That was good. But I was rewording and cutting and re-adding and oh, just, I want it to be just right. And yeah, so anyway, um, ended up going out this evening as a family with the intention of going and picking up these Concord grapes from this lady I ordered them from off Marketplace. And we were going to either go to Superstore first or do that first, one or the other, but do both anyway tonight. We didn't get going until after six. Supper did not get made. We headed out and I stopped at a bank ATM just to take some money out to pay for these grapes. And I don't even know how this all went down, but somehow or other time got away on us and we ended up just skipping Superstore because although it's Thursday today, today is the first day of a new week's worth of PC Optimum offers at Superstore. 
but their new flyer doesn't start till tomorrow. So here I had made out two lists, one for things to get tonight, with the intention of going back after work tomorrow night to get the stuff that's on sale on the new flyer, which means two, two trips to Superstore. Made no sense. So in the end, we decided just to go to Superstore tomorrow. I work until 7.30 tomorrow night, so I'll go after that. And just go over and get these grapes. So we did, and we stood in the driveway and chatted with the lady for a while. It was great, nice. And then decided to hit a drive through on the way home for supper because we hadn't made supper. And while we're in the drive through, suddenly the uh, windshield and windows in the car bogged up with the air conditioning running. Really odd. And next thing you know, the car is going ding, 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 ding. Well, it was telling us that the car was overheating and we were in the middle of a drive through with a car in front of us, a car behind us, we're trapped. So in the middle of the drive through we stopped the car. And then when it was our turn at the speaker to order, we didn't bother ordering, we just kept right on driving. Because we didn't want the car to like freeze up and die in the middle of the drive through or in the middle of the road, we just want to get home. So with the windows down and the fan for the car completely turned off, so no AC running, no nothing, we made it home, and at some point during the drive home, the ding, ding, ding stopped. I guess the engine must have cooled down. Great. So we're in the house. We haven't gone to Superstore. I've got all these grapes. I have to find room in the fridge for them. I ordered like 16 liters, like four ice cream pails worth, basically. And they were in like this giant cardboard box. So I put the bulk of them into a great big metal bowl, and the rest are in two ice cream pails in the fridge. I had to make room for all that, though. That was a challenge. So meanwhile... My other half so out of the car, out of the curb, checking the car, he popped the hood and, you know, he said he ran it idle it for five minutes and sure enough, you know, the air conditioning is making the, making it fog up again. Shouldn't be. But more importantly, he's noticing under the hood that the radiator fan should be turning. You know, when he turns that fan on, like it should be turning and it's not. And that is the fan that should be keeping the, the engine from overheating. So. So tomorrow, like, he has to be at work in a few hours because he works at 3.55 Friday morning. That's the shift he's had all week. He's working like 3.55 in the morning to 11.30. I have to work at 2 o'clock tomorrow, so I like to go in a half hour early, so 1.30. So he's going to take my car to work tomorrow, which also has issues and needs to be fixed, but that's been an ongoing thing for a while. So he's going to take my car to work tomorrow and then come home, run me to work, and hopefully on one of his breaks if he has a minute hopefully he'll have been able to call a garage that was willing to take the other car so he can take it in and drop it off maybe for the weekend because i'm off saturday sunday monday so it's no big deal if the other car is gone for the weekend that's fine we can just use mine because i don't need to go very far other than to get groceries but we'll see it tomorrow this is labor day weekend so tomorrow is the friday of a long weekend so will we be able to get the car seen you know i don't know maybe not they might be full up maybe they'll say drop it off for the weekend Maybe we'll say come back on Tuesday. I don't know. We don't know if it's just the radiator fan or if it's something electrical overall that's happening because he did say that he looked like his headlights were dimmer than normal tonight too. The high beams are working, but not the regular. So I don't know. So it's been a bit of a stressful day. So here it is. It is now 12.03 and I'm washing clothes. So these delicates, they still have 30 minutes left on them. And then I'm going to dry them for 10 minutes in the dryer and then I'll hang them upstairs in the bathroom stall overnight in the shower stall. So in the meantime, I'm going to bring my laundry hamper in here and sort out the laundry because I have got, I've gotten way behind on the laundry. <laughs> I'm behind on everything. So I'm going to bring the laundry hamper in here and I'm going to sort out probably a load of darks and a load of light colors, which are my two usual loads. Sometimes I will combine them into one load, but because the hamper's so full, I'm pretty sure I have enough to make a full load of each. So let me drag that in here and sort that out. I don't usually bring the hamper right in here, but I'm going to this time. It is heavy right now because it's so full. So we have some darts, probably some whites too, but I don't know if we have enough to make a load. Light colors over here. I'm thankful that I have the long weekend off, but we have what's called um, the Red River Exhibition usually on here in June, but with COVID we didn't have it here this last year or last year or this year. But now the people that put it on are doing like a Red River X of sorts fall fair. And my daughter really wants to go. 
She was supposed to go tomorrow with a friend from work, but he now has to work so he can't do that. So, and that was going to be ideal because I don't like going on rides, so I wasn't going to have to go on rides. But since he can't go, she wants to go on Saturday, and guess who's supposed to be going? So, I still don't want to go on rides because I still hate rides. But I'm willing to go along just because I have somebody to go with. Although I really want a long weekend. I always say my days off are never really days off, and they aren't. And I really would like my long weekend to be my days off. But she's already pre purchased the passes to go, so. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she doesn't have to work tomorrow because this is her work stuff. I didn't even realize that was in there. Uh, she doesn't work till early Sunday morning, so. Now, sometimes I do a load of greens because she has a lot of green stuff, but I'm gonna mix these in with the color gold for now because I don't think there's enough of them in the hamper to warrant making a load of its own. And I think most of that green stuff we've had long enough that it's not going to run her lead on anything else. So. We will see. I'm just going to turn this a little bit more here. I don't even know how much I was on screen there. Oh, I was probably half on, half off. Not that it's really a huge concern for how much for me to see, but... Anyway, so it's been an interesting day. And I don't mean interesting in a great way either. It's been a little stressful. Now, this red shirt I'm going to put in with the darks. And then those the towels upstairs are light blue. I'm probably not going to worry about making a towel load. I'm just going to throw them in with the color load. And, and the only one that does laundry here. There's three adults living here. The only one that does it. I don't mind it. The washing and drying part isn't so bad. It's the folding and putting away that gets me every time. I tend to really procrastinate on that. It is my weakness. One of the one of many. So I don't know when this video will be finished because I'm not going to film everything with laundry tonight because 12.07. This load should be done by 12.30. I hope to be 10 minutes in the dryer and then hang them. And while that's happening, I'll start a load in the washer again. So I'm hoping before one to be in bed. So I'm not gonna stay up all night. There won't be a load for you to watch me fold because I'm not doing that type of sleep hour. It just isn't happening tonight. I don't feel super tired right now, but I know that I'm more mentally tired because I'm stressed not knowing how much this car appears going to be. So, and I do have to work tomorrow. I have been fighting this headache all day and I just don't know don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, both work-wise, and with the house and the car, and just everything. Stress level is a little elevated tonight, so even though I don't feel super drained right now, I know I just simply need to get some rest. So I hope to be in bed before one. Make myself rest whether I want to or not, kind of thing. Yeah, I've got lots of darks on the floor there. Lots of them. Not surprised. And I think last time I was in the washroom, I thought there was some laundry on the floor, some of which would be mine, on my shower earlier. I'm usually pretty good about bringing to the hamper, but sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'm as bad as anyway, and I do forget. So I'll have to go gather that. to separate our male and, female cock male and female cockatiel into two separate cages. The sale we adopted in Christmas, 20, Christmas 2015. Ozzy and me got in fall 2019, I want to say. Both of them were Humane Society birds, they're both cockatiels. And they became best friends, basically. Well, at least in his eyes, anyway, I don't know if it's mutual on her part, but they, they basically made it. They've tried to have babies last spring, and again, this year they laid eggs. Last year, only one egg hatched. 
and it didn't, the baby didn't survive one a few days. This year, all the eggs appeared to be dead, so we left them in the nest box for a few weeks, that as usual, nothing hatched. Um, they're constantly mating, they're constantly trying, but it seems like only once or twice a year there might be eggs if it's going to happen at all. Um, but lately they've taken to mating and like preening each other, which is like grooming each other with their beaks, like over preening each other, they're overdoing it, and then once they're done preening each other, they fight. And we're noticing that she gets the worst of it. She's lost some feathers like around her neck and above her beak a little bit, probably from him picking on her. So we've tried separating them into two cages, which means come cage cleaning day, it's going to be an extra cage to clean. Oh yay, just what we need. We already have a house full of birds and multiple, multiple cages to clean. Just what we need. But we don't want to see her losing feathers or getting injured by her mate. So, <laughs> help me. But then the problem is, he has separation anxiety. He loves her so much that if you take her away, he freaks out. Even if the cage is like where, where my camera is, and I'm holding her on my finger right here. He still freaks out. So even though she's in another cage, right beside his cage, and he can see her, she's still he's still panicking. So if he's not screaming, he's pacing. He's stressing himself out. So <laughs> my daughter is video calling me from her bedroom saying, Mom, what do I do? He's freaking out. He's stressed. You know, and that means if he's yelling and screaming, he's getting crickets started in the next cage over. And that's right next to where he's not sleeping. So... They're going to wake him up. And again, as I said, he's working at 3.55 in the morning this week. And it's already midnight, so he's already not getting much sleep to begin. <laughs> My life is a zoo. So I said, okay, fine, put the coffee tips back together tonight for, for the night. Unless they really start fighting, then take, take him out, take her out again. Separate them for the day, but let them be together for the night. Just for the simple fact that he won't be as stressed, he won't be screaming, he won't keep the household awake, he won't keep Kirk awake. Uh, just, you know, in general. Now, unless they start fighting, then you're going to have to separate them and then just cover them both up and just you're going to have to deal with them. So, anyway. I'll just have her back in the hole in here. My life is far too complicated for my own good. Some people might say, well, it's self-induced. You guys are the ones who adopted these boys. Yeah, I suppose so. Doesn't mean I asked for all this chaos, though. Okay. Currently there's a couple of pillowcases in the dryer. I had my daughter had put one of her comforters in the wash the other day. I don't know why. I don't know if it just smelled funny from sweat. Or if she actually had spilled something on it. I don't know. It was just in the hamper. We got a couple of pillowcases in the dryer too. And not too much else though. Mesh bag. This has all my masks in it. It's good. That means I have two clean masks for work. If I couldn't find a third one tonight, I was going to throw it in this load of delicates because I have a bag in there with a couple of my blouses. Couldn't find the one I was wearing earlier. So it's got to be around the house somewhere. But I have this one and another one already in my clean clothes basket. So I do have two clean ones to choose from. Not that the other one really is that dirty, but it's still. Only September 2nd or September 3rd now, it's been warm. It's, and so I find out even after just wearing it a short time at work, it gets sweaty. Okay, so I'm going to quickly head upstairs to the bathroom and see if there's any laundry on the floor. Like there so often is. Oh, and guess what? One of the other things I said in my video earlier in the clip, that I was going to declutter the kitchen only just by bringing the jars of jam downstairs. That didn't happen either. They're still on my counter. Nothing other than the fact they started my dishwasher, I think somebody unloaded it. It wasn't me, for once. But that's it. So, <laughs> I dropped the ball big time. I got so caught up in editing this document, because it's my own personal story. And how my faith has played a role, and you know, this is my... my they're having a business meeting for all the different, a bunch of different things. They haven't had, been able to have a church business meeting for quite some time because of COVID because they haven't been able to gather. They, and even once church membership or church attendance started again, they could have 25 people, 50 people. They couldn't have a business meeting because you couldn't have enough people there to vote on certain issues or to have a proper meeting. So there's been a bunch of us, I don't know how many, but probably several. And the, considering I applied for church membership two years ago and we're just now getting to this, um, there's probably several others in the same boat like me. 
So whoever is has their membership pending has to speak that night and share their story of why they want to be a member there, but also their faith story, how they came to faith and the whole bit. So this is my story, and I really didn't want to take anything out. I was really hoping he would just forgive the extra 300 words because I've read it out loud. It's like a four or five minute thing to read, but he's really trying to, not he's not trying to be difficult, but he really is trying to keep people to 12 to 1300 words just in the interest of time, because chances are, it's obviously probably not just me that night that will be speaking. There's probably going to be several. So, but it was hard to know what to trim without losing the message, because I've actually been through quite a bit in my life. And to me, each of those things contributed to who I am today and are part of my story. So I managed to trim it down, but it I really got tunnel vision fixated on that and wasn't happy with it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I took this out and then re-added it. No, I'm not taking that out. I'm gonna put that back in. I'm gonna take this out instead. But, oh, but that takes away from the, oh. And it was like, it was a pro, it was an ongoing thing. I'm, it was a day that I had off, but the rest of my family had off too. So even though they weren't talking to me necessarily, or, but just knowing that I didn't have the house to myself, I was just aware that other people were around. I was, so I was trying to be tunnel vision focused on this. And I just couldn't seem to get myself off that computer chair and do other things until that was just perfect because I am a bit of a perfectionist at times when it comes to certain things especially that because it's my story okay anyway I'm going to check the bathroom floor I should probably bring those towels down here and throw them on the load too okay, I'll be right back I knew it. What shirt I will leave to sleep in. Again, I'm not going to do a load of towels. I'm just going to throw them in whatever color corresponding load or leaf will work. I don't have a red load going on. I only have one red shirt in the wash, so I'll add it to the colors. Or the darks, rather. Dark socks. I think these pajama pants, I can probably just still wear them tonight. And then add them to the light color load tomorrow. Two blue towels, we go in the color load. I'll add the sleep pants tomorrow because I'll probably wash the dark load tonight and the color load at some point tomorrow. And I dropped a sock, there it is. Okay, so I am now at 16 minutes left on this load. 12, 18. I probably could stand here and just bap away with you guys all night, but I don't know if you want to listen to that. It's been a day, folks. It's been a year, to be honest. Okay, January 3rd, my daughter's grandmother passed away. They're battling chronic leukemia for 20 years. This is my ex-husband's mother. Uh, it's the only set of living, only set of grandparents my daughter's ever known because my parents have been gone for a number of years. That started the year off. We knew it was coming because she battled that disease for 20 years and we got in word right before Christmas that she only had about a month or two left and she didn't even last that long. We had to buy a new washer and dryer in January. We're in a rental house, but I have my own washer and dryer. My Maytags were 27 years old. They didn't owe us anything. Um, the guys from Lowe's came to install them. Didn't finish the install because apparently there was an issue with the hose that somehow the drain hose and the hose on the washer were the same size, so they wouldn't fit together. One wouldn't fit inside the other, so we had to go to the store and buy another piece, like an adapter. And we did, we tried that, and guess what, it leaked. So I called them and said, could you please come and just finish installing, because we got the piece now. Because we, we tried putting that adapter on and it leaked, so obviously we don't know what we're doing. And it turns out they needed to level it anyway. And even though the dryer was perfectly fine that they brought, they hadn't leveled that either. So okay, well while you're here, finish the install, let's make it so these hoses don't leak, level it, and please level the dryer. There's no reason you shouldn't have done that in the first place. Then it was good. Well, actually, the washer still leaked one more time after that, and whatever. We had an astronomical 
water bill, more than double our usual water bill. And even though we're renters, we just sucked it up and decided we're going to hire somebody and have him check out why, you know, to make sure there's no leaks in the house, right? Turns out the toilets should really be replaced. They're old and the downstairs one for sure was definitely leaking, which is probably why the water bill is so high. So he installed two new toilets. Okay, great. That was a few hundred dollars. Uh, the bathroom ceiling had been peeling for quite some time. The, 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 the fan up there had stopped working. So there was humidity and it was making the bathroom ceiling peel. So the same guy came back and he, in the springtime, he, he and his grandson, they painted the bathroom. They scraped the ceiling down, used some kind of drywall compound on there to fix that and painted it. Looked okay. We matched it to the same color that's supposed to be in the kitchen and the hallway. He took like a sampling of our wall. He took it to the paint store and they ran it through the machine and they determined it. We tried to get an exact match to our color and he went to do a couple of patch jobs in our kitchen where there was some scrapes and he took his roller made a very big mark uh looks pretty streaky he says oh no it'll dry it'll be dry fine it'll blend in it didn't we'd also asked him to patch a couple of small holes in the hallway wall with the same color same thing he you know we filled the holes and he was going to just simply paint the nail holes over later on with that color. Well, instead he took his roller and made a great big square. And again, it stood out like a sore thumb and I said, oh, it'll, it'll blend in when it dried. It didn't. So I'm like, okay, please, we'll pay you a little bit extra. Come back and paint the hallway and the kitchen with what paint is left. They exhausted what paint was left and did a really crappy job. There needed to be more paint basically, but they, they just did a terrible job. I think in my videos, there's a seven minute clip of just how shoddy a job it was. So friends of ours, they ended up coming in and helping. We ended up having to buy another can, big can and a small can of the same paint. And she and her daughter helped us paint, repaint the kitchen and bathroom all one weekend. And now this car is having issues tonight. My cars have a check engine light on for I don't know how long. I just went through my third summer of no working air conditioning in my car. We're in the process of redoing our finances right now too. And school shut down in May, which meant my, you know, my workload was a little bit less because I wasn't juggling two jobs, but that meant loss of income. Now school starts next week. So yay, a little more income. It's only a part-time job, just lunchtime, but it means, oh great, I'm juggling two jobs again. So it's a double-edged sword. I'm thankful for the income, but I'm not thankful for the toll it's going to take on my butt. So it's, it's been a year. Like it's been one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. Um, the carpal tunnel in my right hand, I think, is flaring up. It's been getting a little worse. I'm noticing more issues with that too. Just multiple different things, you know. And of course, we've been working through COVID. I'm thankful we still have jobs. But, you know, working at a grocery store, both my daughter and I, and in a school, my daughter and I, and then my husband driving bus, five essential service jobs between the three of us in the middle of a pandemic, and both my daughter and I are, you know, compromised. So it's been real interesting. It's been a year. <laughs> All kinds of good stuff going on. And my sister and brother-in-law live out in British Columbia, and she posted a picture the other day of the fires, the forest fires, like the wildfires going on out there, which they deal with somewhat every year, but that picture was scary. And it was taken from their driveway. It was six kilometers from their house and they had their bags packed ready to evacuate just in case. That's getting too close to home. And one of my other sisters, she's turning 76 this fall. She's a lot older than I am. My dad was almost 50 when I came along. Her health is deteriorating. She is now in a retirement home, like an assisted living type retirement place. Um, with a nurse on site 24 7 she is not doing great so there's just a lot of stuff happening so yeah this car thing I'm hoping I have a feeling it might be a pricey repair I'm hoping it's not as bad as what we're speculating but who knows we'll have a better idea tomorrow if the car can even be seen tomorrow if not it might not be seen on Tuesday but hopefully we can at least get an idea what it might be and what kind of cost so we'll see Oh, I'm down to 10 minutes left. But you know what? I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. This is probably going to be a long video, just me ranting. So I will pick you back up maybe after work tomorrow night and show you my grocery haul, assuming that I actually do get the Superstore tomorrow night. And then on Saturday, 
I'll probably be going to the ball fair with my daughter because her friend that was supposed to go tomorrow now has to work, so I'll probably end up going with her. So, and then church is Sunday, but I do have Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, so I'm hoping at some point, maybe tomorrow night, to get some of the grapes going, boil them up and let them string overnight, and then make the jelly on Saturday after the fair, or something like that. But I'll show you my groceries tomorrow night, and I'll show you either, maybe, maybe the jelly making, maybe not, I'll be able to show you the jelly after it's made. But I will check back in with you guys sometime on Friday. And we'll go from there. Hope everybody's having a great day or a good week. And I guess we'll see you next time. Probably sometime on Friday. Hi again, everyone. It is now 10.30 Friday evening. And I'm going to bring you a quick grocery haul. I'm going to tack that on to this, to this video. Um... I worked until 7.30 tonight and then we went to Superstore to get some things. Had a pretty significant grocery list. Got most of the things on my list, except for cucumbers of all things. All they had, cucumbers weren't on my offers, but we don't have any in the house currently. And all they had in the store that I could see were just mini cucumbers and that's not what I wanted. So I just left that alone. I know we have them at my store, so I may just go grab some from there at some point in the next few days just to have some produce in the house. Um, if you hear Cricket in the background, that's because he's trying to make his presence known in this video as well. I'm trying to keep that down to a minimum because he kind of took over the last time he did this. Last time I tried to film, he was right in the middle of it all. So, or at least in the background, carrying on talking up a storm and almost over talking me. So I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you everything I got and give, try and give you a breakdown of the prices and the points that I earned as well. As best I can, I'm be trying to read the... Uh, receipt to get the prices as I go because some things I remember and some I don't it's been a long day so we get turn you around and we'll get started okay so here we go um first thing I got was I got a bag for ten dollars a fully cooked Italian style meatballs 1.8 kilograms bag of no-name brand chicken strips I like to have these on hand 2.72 kilograms <clears throat> I like to have a bag of those in the freezer again again if you're new here if you're not familiar with um, Real Canadian Superstore, anything that's like the yellow packaging, black bar that says no name, that is the store brand. Um, that or President's Choice is also the store brand. So these two items are not on my offers. That's okay. Some things were, some things were not. We don't really have a lot of bagels in the house. So I got a bag of raisins, cinnamon raisin bagels and a bag of uh, four cheese bagels, actually. One is Country Harvest brand, one is Dempster's. Three jars of no-name brand pickles. These were on my offers. Limit of four, but I don't think I have room on my shelves for four. So I'll put one in the fridge and keep two downstairs on the shelves for now. No-name brand tomato, cans of tomato paste, tomato sauces, that kind of thing were on my offers. So I grabbed two cans of crushed tomatoes and two tomato paste. I think I do have some tomato paste already, but I used up my last two cans of crushed tomatoes when I made lasagna. When I make a pan of lasagna each batch takes a can of tomato paste and a pound of uh, and a can of crushed tomatoes so with two more cans of crushed tomatoes in the house I have two more you know basically I have enough that I can use when I do another double batch of lasagna again or single batch or whatever but if I want to make two pans again sometime I now have the two cans of crushed tomatoes that I need as well as the two cans of tomato paste although I think I do have tomato paste downstairs but you can never have it's kind of one of those staples you use tomato I use tomato paste in a number of different recipes so it's good to have Another large bag of sugar. I do a lot of baking, but also I have a lot of, pardon my floor, lots of sweeping that needs to be done in here, but not at this hour of the night. Um, I do a good bit of baking, so I like to have sugar on hand, and I have a large bag right now, but I've also been doing a lot of jam making, a lot of can canning. And you'll see in my fridge in a few minutes that I have a large amount of Con Concord grapes in the fridge. I'm hoping to turn them into grape jelly this weekend. And as I've told you before in other videos, or if you're familiar with the idea of canning, uh, making jams or jellies, each batch of jam, jam or jelly takes quite a bit of sugar, usually somewhere between six, seven, eight cups, depending on the kind of jam that you're making. So I have a large bag of sugar already, but I want to get another one just because I've got so many grapes in the fridge to turn into jelly, I'll probably be making three or four batches, which will probably be anywhere from six to seven or so cups of sugar per batch. So I just... I don't want to use everything up on the jam making and then have nothing left over for baking. So I want to make sure I have lots of sugar on hand. Two cans of chili style tomatoes, actually three cans. Um, they were cheaper if you bought them in quantities of three. And I use two cans when I make a batch of chili. But when I make taco soup, that also requires one jar. 
or one can rather, sorry if I'm stumbling on my words a bit, it's late. Well, not too bad, it's 10.30, but it's been a long shift at work and everything else. Anyway, the chili style tomatoes, I use two of them in a batch of chili, but I also use a can when I make taco soup. So the fact that it was cheaper to buy quantities of three made total sense because I could use two in chili and one in a batch of taco soup. The Aylmer diced tomatoes with Italian spices, that is also for taco soup. I use one can in that. Let me see if I can find some of these on here. The 10 kilogram bag of sugar was $12.87. Um, no name crushed tomato, they were two for a dollar. Or not two for a dollar, but two at one dollar a piece. So the crushed tomatoes were a dollar a piece. Tomato paste, I'm not sure. I believe the tomato paste were 68 cents each. Yes, that's correct. And then the chili tomatoes were either $1.88 a piece or three for $4. So it made sense to buy the three because like I said, I can use two in a batch of chili and one in taco soup. The Ilmer tomatoes were uh, $1.48, so not too bad. I got a, a can of pure pumpkin to make um, pumpkin pies for Thanksgiving. Um, our Thanksgiving is in October. If you're watching this and you are in the U.S., our Thanksgiving weekend is the same as your Columbus, Columbus Day weekend. So, and I know that on the inside of that label is the recipe for, for making pumpkin pie out of that. You can also buy cans of pumpkin pie filling and just simply make pumpkin pie out of that. But I like to be able to use the pure pumpkin and then follow the recipe. The recipe on the inside of the label is for two pumpkin pies. I believe you can get two pies out of that can of pumpkin. And I think I might have some canned pumpkin downstairs, but that would be from last fall. And I'm not sure what the expiry on those ones is or are, I should say. This, these new ones are, this new one is good till 2023, November. So I don't know, the ones downstairs might still be okay. I'm not sure, but regardless, even if it is fine, I'll use that one for the pie. But these I can always, in once it gets to be fall here like this and starting to be now, I like to make pumpkin loaf or pumpkin muffins, just all kinds of different things. So, you know, I'll use this for two pumpkin pies or if the ones are good downstairs still, I'll use this or, or that in maybe some pumpkin muffins or something because it's fall and you know as soon as fall hits it's pumpkin spice time right no name brand orange juice these were around i think they're close to a dollar a piece they were on my offers and actually i for whatever reason somehow or other i did not was not awarded the points for those originally so i've submitted a points inquiry and gotten the points wasn't worth a lot of points it was only 400 points per two dollars spent and i spent two dollars on them so I put, submitted a points inquiry and I got the, two, the 400 points. So that's, it's all said and done. Um, evaporated milk, that is to go with the pumpkin. When you make the pumpkin pie from scratch, um, if you're making just a pie, like using the canned pumpkin pie filling, I forget what all you have to put then. Maybe not, probably not all that terribly much because the pie filling is already made. But when you're doing this from scratch, using the pumpkin, I do know that one of the things you need is evaporated milk. That's one of the ingredients. So I grabbed a can of that. Ziploc bags were on my offers, so I grabbed a bag of large Ziploc bags. I use these quite a bit. If we were, to, if I buy a large three or four kilogram bag or three or four kilogram box of boneless skin, and, can't speak, I'm sorry, I guess I'm tired. If I buy a box of three or four kilogram, I can't remember what, what size it comes in, but it's one or the other, of boneless skinless chicken breasts from my work when they go on sale, then usually instead of putting that whole big box in the freezer, which takes up so much room, I usually break them up into quantities of three or four, which is enough for like one meal, and freeze them in Ziploc bags. That way I only have three or four to a Ziploc bag. So basically I'm taking out a meal's worth at a time to thaw, or if I buy a club size pack of tray of ground beef, that's two or three or so pounds, then I divide that up. If it's a three pound tray, I try to divide it up in approximately one pound portions and put them in the Ziploc baggies and then flatten them right out, squeeze the air out and freeze them flat in the freezer so they take up less room. And again, I'm just thawing out a single meal's worth of meat at that point. And I'm not sure how many Ziploc bags I have currently, but because I use them for both chicken breasts and ground beef, I use the large bags quite a bit. And the Ziploc bags were on my offers this week. So I grabbed just one package for now because I think I still have some, but I could have bought like the three pack, but that would have been like $12, $13 or something. And this wasn't I just didn't need that many right now. I'm trying to see if I can find that quickly in the, sorry for all the crinkling of the receipt, but I'm trying to see a uh, Ziploc baggie, $5.97, limit of two. Um, yeah, I only want one. So I just bought, just bought one. I could have bought two, 
but I think I only need one for the time being. Clamshell of BC peaches. BC is British Columbia. These are, that's the west coast of Canada, the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. So these are Canadian grown peach, peaches from British Columbia, the west coast of Canada. It is a three liter pail. My daughter will be happy to see these because the last time I brought peaches and nectarines and pears into the house, very few of them got eaten. Most of them just went directly into jam and she was disappointed that I didn't save too many just for straight eating. So these, sure I probably could make more jam, but I've made pear jam, I've made peach jam, I've made pear nectarine jam. These now my intention is to just simply have for eating. Bag of apples. Let's see the peaches. I wonder if I can find the on the bill here. Um, I don't know if I can find them. They're probably on there. You'll probably see them before I do. Oh my goodness. Well, there's my bagels down there. 347 and 368. Uh, peaches, 698. And a five pound bag of gala apples. That was $6.63. A two pound bag of baby cut carrots. They were on for 497. A three pound or 1.36 kilogram bag of mandarin oranges. Where is that on the receipt? It should be there. There it is, 498. Some Stringless sugar snap peas. I really quite like those. It's a nice snack. I like to have them in my lunch for work. That is a, what size of bag was that? Not a huge bag. 680 grams. So, um, let's see if I can find that on here. 7.98 for that bag. Sometimes you used to be able to get a slightly larger bag for that price. Things have gone up in price, unfortunately. None of these things, the only thing that's on my offers here is, is apples. Oranges, carrots, peaches, peas, none of that stuff is on my offers. Neither are the uh, celery or the pears that I have here. But I did get celery. That was $1.48. That's the cheapest I've seen it in quite a while. Um, like it in salads, like to just eat celery sticks. But I also like to have it on hand to put in soups and stews as well. And Bartlett pears. I forget how much they were a pound. It says they're five forty-seven a kilogram, but that... I just trying to remember what it said on the on the bin. It had the price per pound. I can't remember how much that was, but they wound up being five dollars and seventy seven cents. I got a liter of is it a liter? Yeah, one liter of half and half. Um, I bought that because it is an ingredient when I make um, when I make chicken pot pie. Let's see if I can find it on here. Let's see. Oh my goodness, half and half. $2.97 each or two for $3.98. But that's literally the only thing I use it in is my chicken pot pie. So there was no point in buying two. Uh, I'll have to do that by mid-September because the expiry date is September 16th. What I would like to do is make another batch of pastry, like pie, pie crust. My, my pastry makes enough for three double crust pies. But instead of making fruit pies this time, I'll make chicken pot pies. I have a couple of whole chickens in the freezer. I'll cook a two or three of them up at once probably. Cut up enough chicken to have for fillings for three pot pies. And I would like to put three pot pies together. So I'll make a batch of pastry and make one pot pie for supper and the other two to go in the freezer. Because just a couple, what a week or so ago, I made a double batch of lasagna, two pans, one to eat for supper that night and lasted us a few days. And the other one went right into the freezer unbaked. That way next time it just has to be baked. Same thing with the pot pies. I'll make three, two to be, go in the freezer unbaked and then just pull them out, pop them right in the oven, cook them from frozen. But two different kinds of rice. This is the this is the other store brand, PC President's Choice. That's the store brand, along with along with this packaging. It says no name. Uh, whole grain instant brown rice. So kind of like minute rice, but brown rice. And it's the store brand. And some long grain white rice. The the 1.2 kilogram for the brown rice, and this is a two kilogram brand for the white rice. Now I'm trying to determine what I did wrong there was a chicken recipe I've had for years and when I made it years ago when I was newly wed to my first husband it said to put two cups I think I would, I'd have to look at the recipe but two cups of rice uncooked in the bottom of the casserole dish and then layer your chicken breasts over top and then make your sauce and put pour that over top of everything and bake it and you know the, I guess the thinking was that with the moisture from the sauce that would cook and baking for that long in the oven that that would cook the rice well the meat cooked, the sauce cooked, but the rice did not. And I don't really know why. I have never known why to this day, but I did use minute rice. And I'm wondering if perhaps using regular rice might solve that problem. So 
I'm going to use minute rice for, well, because it's whole grain, I will use that in the bird's chop when I make them, when I cook up a batch of chop, whether with rice and plain pasta and vegetables and that kind of thing for them. But also for us, when we just want some quick rice to have on the side with some chicken breasts. But, but for things like that casserole, or when I have more time and I don't need to worry about making rice quickly and I can just take my time cooking it, I'm going to try this. But particularly in that casserole, I'm going to try it again and see if doing using this will make a difference because every time I've made that casserole since I've simply pre-cooked the rice just to be on the safe side because obviously putting uncooked minute rice in did not work and I'm wondering if that's just because it was instant rice and regular rice would do the job uncooked but we'll see just thinking out loud here uh instant brown rice uh was 588 I'm trying to see where the if it tells me where the white rice is or not on here I don't know I would have thought it would have been close to that on the list I don't see it. I think it was like $3.97. It wasn't very expensive for the, for the Noni brand white rice. It was not very expensive. Another block of tender flake lard. And for the grape jelly I'm making this weekend, three more boxes of Cerdo, $2.98 a piece, I believe. Now this right here will get is enough to give me six batches, which I don't think I'm gonna be making. I don't think I'll get that much. I have one more box already, but each each box contains two pouches and grape jelly only i believe only takes one pouch so if that's the case i have enough here for six batches which i don't believe i need because i have another box already unopened but these ones are good until december 2022 so if for some reason i make like three batches and i only use a box and a half plus i have that other box fine no problem i'll just save this other whatever unopened box until next summer because they're good until december of 2022 so they have a good long shelf life. Classico spaghetti sauce, not on my offers currently, but they were on sale for $2 a piece. I have a couple downstairs, but I wanted to stock up. I got a tomato and basil, and I bought a four cheese, which I haven't bought in quite some time. Cerdo is not on my offer, neither are any of these rices or the tender flake, but just things I wanted to stock up on. A couple of limes, a couple of lemons, just to use in baking primarily. No name spices were on my offers, so I grabbed a container of no name brand garlic powder. And again, you know from all the sounds in the background and from talking, me talking in previous videos, we have a house full of birds. We have parrots, but we also have smaller birds like budgies and cockatiels. Cockatiel seed mix, I believe it's $5 a bag if you buy two. They're cheaper to buy quantities of two, but the budgie seed is $6.48, regardless of how many you buy. There was no deal if you buy more than one, so that's okay, but they just need, because we have seven budgies, they eat a lot. Um, our bigger birds eat pellets that we actually have to get at Petland because Super Shortest doesn't carry specialty par parrot food and the cockatiels do get more than just this seed we supplement with pellets as well. Two and a half dozen eggs because I'm getting low. I think I only have about a dozen eggs left in the house. And these Halloween candy. I bought three of them. They were on sale for $9.98 a piece. I got 50 count and each of these had an in-store points offer of 2,500 points per bag. They're on for $9.98 a piece, $9.98 a bag rather, and 2,500 points per bag in store points offer. So that is it. That is everything I got. Let me grab my receipt again and I will be back in just a moment. I'm going to put you down for a second. I need to put something away here and I'll be back in just a minute to give, tell you my total that I spent and break down the points for you. Be right back. Okay, we are back. I'm going to give you the breakdown of what I spent here and the points that were earned. Um, I had exhausted pretty much most of my PC Optima points in the last few weeks. I'd used quite a bit of them. I had basically nothing left. And so I'm starting from scratch, rebuilding them again. I earned, let's see, a total of, okay, 1,200 points on apples, 1,200 points on no-name spices, that's the garlic powder, 1,200 points on no-name brand pickles, uh, 200 points for no-name tomato sauces or, yeah, what well, doesn't say or, <laughs> no-name tomato sauces or, but yeah, so basically the no-name brand, of, it doesn't say anything else beside that, but, but what it means is the no-name uh, crushed tomatoes and tomato paste, and then 800 points for the Ziploc bags. Subtotal was 214.45, I spent 221.51, that was a little bit more, you know, it was a pretty hefty grocery bill this time, but that's okay, didn't have any points to redeem, that's all right. I had, come on, let's get this thing to focus here. Come on, there we go. So, in-store offers, 7,500 points. That is the That was the three bags 
of Halloween candy. Uh, last year, because of COVID, we had, even though we live really close to several schools, we had no children for Halloween, just, just because of COVID. I made probably 75 to 80 treat bags up, but I made a point of buying Halloween candy that we would eat in case we didn't get any kids. And thankfully, there was stuff we could eat because we didn't really get hardly any kids at all. This year, though, I expect we should be getting more. School is has been out since May, when normally it runs from after Labor Day till June 30th. But because of COVID, we shut down right before Mother's Day in May. But we're going back to school this week, and as long as our numbers don't start climbing ridiculously again, we should see trick-or-treaters this year. So I'm hoping to put aside one of the blue bags and probably the orange bag for some treat bags, and the other bag will probably go into maybe my candy jar downstairs or be used to take in for snacks to work in my lunches or something, or my daughter's or whichever. I'll have to share, of course. Anyway, so that was 2,500 points per bag of that Halloween candy, so 7,500 points there and 4,600 points for what I just read off above up here. So that totaled 4,600 points, plus the 7,500 points for the in-store offer for the Halloween candy. That was a total of 12,100 points earned. And that left me with a closing balance of 18,324 points. Now, I was owed 400 points for the no-name orange juice because they, for some reason they didn't award me that. That does happen from time to time. So I've already submitted a points inquiry. They have fixed it and added the 400 points. So that means I have a closing balance of 18,724 points. You can redeem PC Optimum points in store or at the Superstore gas bar, but only in increments of $10. So I'm not quite at the $20 worth of points level yet, but I do have $10. Should I need to use it? I can. It's not a lot, but you know, you got to start somewhere. At different points I've had it where I've had over $200 in points available to me. That was recent, but I had used some of them up. So now I'm starting from scratch. I'm at 10,000 points or $10 right now, and I'm at 18,000 points overall. So I'm not quite at the 20,000 point, $20 mark yet, but I'm, I'm on my way back up. So anyway, I got to get these two guys into the freezer and get my half and half in the fridge. I don't know how much else is going in the fridge tonight. Thankfully, not much needs to go in. Why? There's hardly any room in the fridge because all the Concord grapes. Uh, there's barely room. I can already get the door closed to the fridge. Um, I'm hoping to make jelly this weekend. Those are four liter ice cream pails and that bowl it holds more than that. That probably holds like an ice cream pail and a half if not two ice cream pails worth. Because I ordered from somebody off Facebook Marketplace four four liter ice cream pails of these Concord grapes to make grape jelly. Now, the plan tomorrow is we're supposed to be going to this. My daughter wants to go to this um, uh, fall fair and it's not going to be quite as big of a deal or production as the Red River X usually is when it comes to, to Winnipeg or to when it comes to you know the, when it comes time to that in the summertime usually that happens in June but because of COVID that hasn't happened the last two summers so this is sort of this fall fair is sort of a replacement for that but from what I'm reading online it's a much smaller scale than the Red River X but nonetheless, she wants to go, and her friend from work that was supposed to go with her doesn't sound like he's able to. So as much as I hate rides, and I'm terrified of them, apparently I'm going. So um, whatever time we get home from that is when I'll start processing the grapes in the fridge. And I'm not making jam, I'm just going to do jelly, so I don't have to worry about like getting seeds out or anything. I just simply have to get them off the stems and wash them and get them prepped to boil and stuff. Because with jelly, you're just extracting the juice. So we'll go tomorrow to this fair for most of the day and sometime in the evening when we get home I'm going to get started on the jelly by processing the grapes and I'll put them in cheesecloth to strain overnight tomorrow night. And then I have church Sunday morning but sometime after church I'll come home and make the jelly out of the juice. And I'm not sure how many batches I'll get out of all those grapes but I'm hoping to get a few batches. And then I think I'll be done canning for the season finally. I had wanted to do crab apple jelly like I did last year but... I don't, we don't have a carob apple tree in our yard. Don't know anybody that has. I got them off Marketplace last year and I've been watching Marketplace, but I'm just not seeing a lot of ads for things like crab apples. We had drought conditions up here most of the summer. So I think that, and a late frost this spring too. So I think that really, really affected a lot of growing, a lot of things growing. So unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get crab apples. So grape jelly will probably be the end of my canning this summer. And that's okay. <laughs> I'm tired out now. Anyway, it is 10.57. I'm going to get those things back in the freezer and my half and half in the fridge and call it a night. 
sit down, have a late supper, relax for a bit before I go to bed. And some of this stuff is just going to have to get put away tomorrow. It just is. I'll put some of it away, but for right now, I need to relax. It's been a long day. I may, I'll pick, up the, pick this up again tomorrow for a little bit and show you maybe a little bit of what the fair looks like. Um, and I don't know beyond that what else I'll include in this video. It is getting long, so I'm going to have to wrap it up at some point soon. But I'll pick this back up at some point this weekend. And then after that, we'll wrap it up. Probably sometime Saturday or Sunday. But for now, time to relax. Have a good night, everyone. Okay, it is Saturday afternoon. What is it, about 2 o'clock right now? 2.07. We are at this fall fair. Yes, I see the train. <laughs> My daughter is in her glory. Okay, okay, we'll start walking. We'll start walk start walking. Uh, I wanna go check out the souvenirs. Souvenirs already? We just got here. Oh look at the train. Yes, I see the train. She's 21 and she's as excited as a six-year-old. No, I am not going on that. 
So I am not rock climbing. 15 seconds to get over here. Or not you're happening. Not for everyone in the market, you gotta give them some green lemonade. You need to show everyone. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Rachel is on the orbiter. She's on this ride all by herself. She's being brave. There she goes. I think I heard her yelling. I've lost track of her on there. She's on there somewhere. <laughs> I've lost track of it. I know she's the only one by herself. Here she is. Okay, hi again, everybody. It is now Sunday at about 12:30 in the afternoon. Um, so I went yesterday with my family to the Red River X, the fair, basically, that has been going on here. Um, my daughter really, really wanted to go, and she was supposed to go with a co-worker, but unfortunately that fell through, so our family ended up going, and I am not a rides person, to the point that some of them actually are pretty terrifying to me, but I managed to push past my fears and go on something. Some, especially the Ferris wheel, I did not like it at all. I was pretty much in full-on anxiety attack mode, but I got through it. It actually was, in hindsight, a pretty short ride, really. They, they are, but in the moment, you know, when you're, the fear of heights kicks in and the anxiety kicks in, it's pretty crippling a little bit. But, but you know what? Even though she's not a kid, she's 21, she's still my kid, you know, even though she's an adult kid. And, you know, being a good sport for her sake and going along and it made it meant a lot to her so that she didn't have to simply go on all the rides herself and so that was worth it even though it was kind of scary for me to go on that ride in particular the, we didn't go on everything the scariest of the rides we did not go on she did not even go on the scariest of the rides but and a couple she did go on by herself but that you know i mean it took a lot for me to push past to go on a ferris wheel but whatever we did it and as scary as it was for me, I know it meant a lot to her. And that was the important thing. So it's now Sunday, 1230 in the afternoon. I'm just home from church. And I, I mean, yesterday my Fitbit told me that I put in over 10,000 steps, most of which were at the X. Um, and I don't doubt it because I was exhausted last night. Still haven't worked on my jelly yet, but that's okay. I'll work on that today or tomorrow, um, hopefully before the grapes go bad. But I just came home from church. Um, I woke up. I had to drive my daughter to work at 7 this morning, laid back down till about 9.30, then got up and showered and got ready for church. I am still feeling pretty tired from yesterday, although I don't feel too bad right now, but I do have a really bad headache like right up here. I woke up with that in the middle of the night, and even when I drove her to work this morning, it was there, and it would have been so easy to just turn the alarm off at 9.30 and say, forget it, church will wait another week. But you know what? It's about priorities to me. Um, church is, it's not just church attendance. It's just not just a thing on the to-do list. It's something where I recharge. It's important to me. And just as I pushed past my fears yesterday and made my daughter and her happiness a priority, this was me time. And even though I'm physically in a bit of pain today, I pushed past that and made this a priority. So that, and I'm glad I did. My head still hurts. I'm hoping to get some Advil in me and some food in me and some caffeine in me now. And that that'll make a bit of a difference so that then I can get on with the rest of the afternoon. Whether that be pulling out some fall decor or whether that be just relaxing or whether it be working on this jelly. But either way, I just wanted to share that with you guys that, you know, this is how the weekend has gone. We've gone to the X. We were there for seven hours. I put in a heck of a lot of steps yesterday. I did sleep, but unfortunately I did wake up with a nasty headache. But you know what? It was worth it for her, for her happiness to be a good sport and to push past my fears and make her a priority. But by the same token, it was worth it for me to push past my physical discomfort this morning and make church attendance, which is my me time in a lot of ways or part of my me time, make that a priority. Because as a mom, sometimes I don't always make myself a priority. And a lot of people might look at church attendance as, oh, that's just something you have to do or it's on your to-do list. You could just let that go for a week. Well, no, I mean, because my life is so busy that I don't usually, like if I could just watch church online, no problem, I could. But 
I'm not disciplined enough to do that because knowing it's there and I can just do it whenever, I'll never get around to it. Knowing that I have to be there a Sunday at 11 o'clock, that means I have to sit down and sit still for that hour and set that time aside and put the phone away and pay attention and listen to our pastor. And I like that that, that means that that's a designated time because if I just left to my own devices, I probably wouldn't get around to it. So that was me time. And I'm glad I went. And it was all about priorities, both yesterday and today. Now, let me put this away for the time again, put my phone down, go inside, have some lunch, get some caffeine in me and some food and some Advil. And hopefully then I'll feel a little bit better to be able to get something accomplished the rest of today. And if not, then I guess maybe I'll have a Sunday afternoon nap because I do still have tomorrow off as well from work. So anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Nothing like helping yourself, Ruby. <laughs> Apparently she likes the grapes. She's also making a mess. Ruby. Somebody likes the grapes. And she's helping herself. And she's also dropping the skins on the couch. You like the grapes, huh? Okay, we're going to cut you off soon. You're making a mess. <laughs> Silly girl. Okay, it is now 9.40 Sunday evening. I, my family and I have been working together trying to get these grapes all pulled off of their clusters and tossing aside any that looked really, really bad or some that were not ready that were just tiny and green and just getting all the good ones out. And I now have these on. I have to, I'm starting the process of making jelly. So I have to bring these guys to a boil. I'm going to work on trying to crush them a bit. It's, there's about 16 cups or four liters of grapes here and only a half cup water so that's all it took that's all it takes and then I'm supposed to kind of mash these up as best I can and then I'm going to ladle them into the cheesecloth and let them strain overnight so I'm probably going to try and get two batches going tonight and get as much juice extracted overnight at just letting it drain overnight letting them strain overnight as I can and then hopefully tomorrow I'll come back and make the jelly I don't know if I'm going to get more than two cups or two more than two batches out of this I uh, got quite a lot of grapes, but I and I thought oh, I'll have enough for probably three or four batches, but I think I'll probably get two batches, maybe three at most. Um, I can't really do this and mash these guys at the same time, not without shaking the, the phone camera because I don't have it on the tripod. So this is as far as I'm going to film for right now. I'm just going to leave it at this because I got to get back to squishing these and stuff, but I will show you probably tomorrow um, all the extracted juice or what have you. I'll, I'll, I'll see, or maybe I'll bring you back tomorrow for the jelly making part of it. But I'm just going to get busy here and get these guys crushed as best I can and then move on to getting the second batch of 16 cups measured out so that I can get both batches straining overnight. Okay. Alrighty, so time to let these guys strain overnight and hopefully we'll be able to extract enough juice out of here. We'll get at least two batches of jelly out of this. I'd like to get three, but we'll see how much juice we actually can extract out of this. Hopefully it'll be enough for three batches. I'll know better tomorrow. I'm just going to let them sit overnight. I know there's already quite a bit of juice coming through, um, so hopefully we'll get enough for three batches. I'd like to at least have that much. don't think I'll get four, but if I can get minimum two, I know there'll be two, but at least three, that would be great. And then since we didn't get wild blueberries and I didn't get crab apples, I'm assuming then that I will be done canning for the season, much to my family's rejoicing, because then the kitchen will finally start to look a little bit more normal, I hope. Uh, I had it looking decent earlier today. But then I made supper, and then I started on the grapes tonight, and yeah, everything went sideways again. So this is what it looks like right now. It's draining. I'll let it sit overnight, and then some point tomorrow I'll see just how much juice we actually were able to extract out of this and get on with making jelly. All right, everyone. It is now 10.30 Monday morning. I'm just going to... I just finished unloading my dishwasher because I need to put some jars in there. Um, the dishwasher is what I usually use to uh, sterilize or sanitize my jars. And then I usually use a small saucepan to put the rims, like the rings and the seals in to sterilize them. I uh, tossed out the cheesecloth with all the pulp. Each batch of jelly requires four cups of juice. I was able to get four cups here. And each of those is two cups. So we've got one batch, two batch, three batches. We actually have enough juice for three full batches of jelly, which is great. And I even still have a single cup 
of gel or a single cup of juice off to the right that you, off camera i don't know what i'll do with that because i don't think you should really be adding more juice than what the recipe calls for so don't have enough for a fourth batch unfortunately but it's kind of too bad but these are all very full two cup cups the one in the back doesn't look as full but it's a two and a half cup that's why it doesn't look as full as some of the others but yeah we got four cups in here and yeah we got enough for three batches so i'm gonna get started pretty quickly here loading some jars in the dishwasher get started start measuring my sugar out and sterilizing everything and then i might as well get on with it because then maybe i might actually get these all done by noon with any luck I, that's about an hour and a half away the juice is all prepped so i just simply have to start sterilizing everything and getting three batches worth of sugar measured out and then we're off to the races. Okay, it is now almost 3.30 Monday afternoon. I finished up making the, je the jelly at about 12.45. And I've got my kitchen mostly put back together. I got all the dirty dishes from the jelly in the dishwasher and it's been run. I do still have a few more dirty dishes over here. So the dishwasher is going to have to be unloaded and reloaded. Um, pickles have to go in the fridge. These guys have to go in the wash. And that cheesecloth, those lasagna noodles, they got to go downstairs, get put away. But otherwise, it's not too, too bad. Not bad in here. But I think this is a good way, good place to end the video because it's kind of gone on and on and on. I have laundry downstairs I have to fold and switch loads over. But you know what? I already filmed folding a load of laundry the other night. I mean, this could go on forever. If I, fold, if I stop and film every single load of laundry I fold, this could go on for eternity. So I don't think we need a three-hour video up here. So I think this might be a good place to stop. This is my grape jelly. I got 10 500 ml jars, four 250 ml. This one is a, also a 250. Like there's three of these, but then this one's also a 250. It's just a wide mouth one, and two of the half cup or 125 ml jars. So that is it. Oh, and somebody is making an appearance. Of course, he is. He hears me talking on camera. No video would be complete without saying without uh, peekaboo from Cricket. Although I don't know if he's actually going to talk or not. He just had to fly in here because he heard me. So. Anyway, that is it for today. I'm going to have to unload and reload this dishwasher and then go deal with the laundry. Uh, my next, it's Monday afternoon right now, so I work Tuesday to Friday this week. And then I have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off next week, unless that changes. So I think what I'll probably do, well, I'll probably be working at the school next week at some point. School goes back in on Wednesday, so the only day I'm going to work at the school this week is Wednesday. Uh, next week, I think I'm doing Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at the school. I can't do Monday because I have a doctor's appointment that morning. But... I do have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off from my main job anyway. So probably I'll do another video maybe next weekend sometime because I'm thinking I'll probably do a batch of chicken pot pies. At that point, I want to make a batch of pastry, which makes six pie crusts or, two, or three two crust pie, three uh, two crust pies. And instead of making them into fruit pies, I'll make them to chicken pot pies, one to have for supper one night and the other two to freeze. So I think that'll be one of the things I do next weekend. And the other thing will probably be um, digging out the fall decor. I was going to maybe do that this weekend, but I've had three straight days off and they have, as, us as usual, been anything but days off. So I don't think I'm going to worry about the fall decor today. If I do, I'll show you what I did come next weekend when I do my next video. Um, but yeah, I think my next video will probably be next weekend sometime when I'm doing my chicken pot pies and the fall decor. Or if I get the fall decor up before, then I'll just show you in that video what it looks like. Anyway, that is it for now. I'm going to try and get this edited and uploaded. I hope everybody is having a good Labor Day holiday. <laughs> Hasn't been much of a holiday for me because I've been busy. But I've been, I'm have been i always busy on my days off. That's nothing unusual. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up down below. Um, leave me a comment down below as well. And subscribe if you are new. And we will see you next time. Hope everybody has had a great long weekend and has a good week ahead. See you next time, everyone.